What's going on everyone? George Edmondson here with MotionVFX.com and I wanted to let you know we're no longer a plug-in company. We're actually a tech review company now. So the first piece of tech that I'm so excited to show you is the Canon E70. Canon Vision, brand new. It's an incredible camera. Let me show you what this bad boy can do. And of course, that's all not true. We're still the greatest plug-in company in the world for Final Cut Pro. But in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can use the brand new M Channel Glitch to make your videos awesome. All right, let's do it. Once you have installed M Channel Glitch via M Installer, you can find M Channel Glitch located in your titles as well as in your transitions. M Channel Glitch comes with seven add-ons five backgrounds, six intros, five lower thirds, one opener, six overlays, Ten social media options and five titles. M Channel Glitch also comes with nine transitions. So in our opening sequence, you can see that we have our opener at the beginning of our timeline. In this opener, you can see that we have four drop zone options and another drop zone option for our logo. You can also easily modify each of the titles right inside your title inspector. When working with your drop zones, if you need to reposition any of those elements, you can simply do so by going into the drop zone that you need to work with and make changes on your drop zone pan and scale. Next, as we scrub through, you can see our lower third option number five. Each of the lower thirds do come with on-screen controls, so you can quickly and easily reposition, scale, and rotate your titles. You also have many different parameters, such as animations, you can modify your position, scale, and rotation, title text, title offset, fonts, colors, and subtitle options as well. So you can see here, we have a transition, which is transition number two, and these transitions are really easy to modify as we just have simple checks on and off to make quick changes to those transitions. We get right into our next scene, which we have the background number four background selected and placed on top of our clip. Now, all of these work as adjustment layers, so they're really, really easy to just drag in just like any other title. As you can see, we have animations in and out. We can modify our background color if we'd like. Our background opacity pixelating our background, as well as pixel size, and our Gaussian blur. Let's continue to move down, and we will zoom into our timeline by pressing Command and the plus key. You can see here we have add-on number 7, which is here, and we do have on-screen controls with this as well, where we can modify the scale, position, and rotation. And with that, we do have our viewfinder distortion on and off, distortion amount, distortion direction, lines colors, lines width, dot color, dot radius, and pixelation parameters. You'll also notice that we have overlay number six on top of our footage. Let me toggle that on and off by pressing V so you can see what it's doing here. And again, it is so simple. We have our animation in and out, 
and then we have pixelate on and off and the amount of pixelation that we want on that overlay. You can see that we have overlay number two on top of our entire project. And this is just a letterbox. And it is very simple with these on-screen controls, animations in and out. So as we move down, you can see we have our lower third at number one. Now let's also look at add-on number six. Now this add-on number six is this animated circle that you can see here with the glitching happening. And what I've done here is I wanted to very quickly and easily highlight what's going on here. So on our position, I set a keyframe. And as I move, I just take our on-screen control and just make those changes to follow the camera. And you can see here that the content position is moving along quite nicely and quite easily. So you can do this really quickly with no need to track anything using those on-screen controls and just a couple of keyframes. And of course, as always, you have the different parameters, animations in and out, position, rotation, scale, distortions, line colors, lines, opacity, color, width, and pixelation parameters. Continue to come down our timeline and we have our transition number nine. And again, very, very simple. We have prisms, pixelation, channel blur, and a bump map. And then we go straight into overlay number five, which again, very easy. We have our animations in and out. We have the threshold, which is going to increase the amount of this effect and then we can make changes to the different colors as well as our distortion direction and the effect amount as we push down then you can see we've got a few different layers going on what's great about this plugin is everything works pretty cohesively together so as you can see we have add-on number three which is going to be our arrow here and I wanted to just have that arrow moving around showing that we are going to be doing a tutorial. So again, I just took my on-screen control and set a keyframe at my content position and changed the position as we move down the timeline. And those keyframes are happening along with our animations, etc. We then have our M channel glitch lower third number two i really like this one it's a ton of fun as mentioned earlier we have all of our parameters but on this one i decided to turn our subtitle off just because i really like the framing that we have here by just talking about m channel glitch and then my voice is explaining that this will be a tutorial and then finally our background which is really so much fun this is background number one, and you've got a lot of goodies in here. You have a drop zone on and off option. So if you wanted to only display some sort of text here, you would just turn that off and then utilize one of your lower thirds to place some text in the center. I wanted to show a bit of our tutorial. So I used just a simple screenshot in our drop zone. You can make these simple changes to your drop zone scale and panning. You also have these on-screen controls, which are pretty wonderful. So if you wanted to slide this over, maybe make this a little bit tighter on our frame here, and then let's very quickly move the M channel over and bring that up. You can see how quickly we were able to do that. And I'm going to reset my parameters here on my arrow and let's move down. We have our arrow coming in here. So we're going to set a keyframe on our position. We will push down just a bit. Why don't we bring our arrow over, come down a bit more, bring our arrow down to our timeline and a bit more right as it's going to fade out. It is moving back to the center and we can see how quickly and easily that was done real time to make those modifications. And that is what is just so fantastic about M channel glitch and honestly about anything that motion VFX does 
is the idea that everything is going to work cohesively together so it has a look and feel but you can use all of these different elements on different parts of your video to give something fresh and new each and every time. So let's say that we like the framing and everything in our background number one, but we just want something a little bit different there in the back. That's quite okay. We can change this background opacity and come down. So why don't we grab background number two, bring this in beneath background number one, and you can see already there, everything is working cohesively together, just like you would think that it was already made to work together. Simply beautiful, simply easy, and so much fun to use. Okay, once again, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Thank you for checking out the tutorial on the brand new M Channel Glitch, now available from MotionVFX.com. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.